Hi, welcome to Bobbins and Bows of Bear YouTube tutorial for a super chunky knitted hat. So today we're going to make this super chunky knitted hat uh, for an average size, probably lady's head or a small gent's head. Um, and there's a pom pom. You don't have to make the pom pom if you don't want to. If you're quite happy with just a, a beanie with a turn back, then um, this is the one for you. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so what will you need? You will need um, 10 millimetre needles, 9 millimetre needles, one or two balls of Amazon Super Chunky. One ball will knit the hat, but if you want a pom pom, you'll definitely need another ball. Um, and if you want a pom pom, you'll need a pom pom maker or some cardboard if you prefer, um, a yarn needle, uh, some scissors, and a, a tape measure. Uh, okay. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to cast on. So we'll start with the uh, 9mm needles and cast on. Uh, we're going to cast on using cable method because I tend to find that my hats tend to be a little bit stretchy with super chunky. So just to give it a little bit of grip. So going to cast on 42 stitches so I do have a tutorial for the cable cast on but you can use any method you wish just a two needle cast on or if you prefer a long tail cast on if you like yours a little bit more stretchy then that's fine so just continue to cast on so we have 42 stitches. Okay, so we have 42 stitches on our needle and we're going to work in one by one rib. Okay, so one by one rib is um, basically knit one, yarn to the front, purl one. You just keep going like that to the end. So knit one, purl one. I do have a video for this, so you can look that up if you want to. Um, because we've got an even number, we've got 42 stitches, when you turn around, you'll start on a knit again. So it's knit one, purl one, turn, knit one, purl one, right to the end of the row. And you continue like this until you have 13 centimeters or five inches. If you want a bigger turn back, you can go a little bit further if you wish. Um, yep. If you like a really stretchy rib, or if you've got a big head, <laughs> you feel you want it to be a bit bigger, then just do the rib in your 10 millimeter needles. You don't worry about using the nine millimeter if you want it a bit bigger and a bit more stretchy. Okay. Okay, so we have our 13 centimetres of rib and we'll give it a little measure. We measure from just under the needle where the actual piece of work starts. That's 13 centimetres, which is five inches. Okay, so we're going to decrease one stitch across this row. So we're going to do another row of rib, but decrease one stitch. Um, so here we go. I usually do it one end if it's a hat because that's where you will sew your hat up and it'll be hidden nicely. So I'll just do it there. So you just knit two together. Like that. And that's decreased from 42 to 41 stitches. And then we continue with the one by one rib to the end. Okay, so we're working on the main piece now, so the 10mm needles are for this main piece. And we'll start in stocking stitch. So you just start with the new needles and leave the old one on. Just don't forget to discard the 9mm needles when you get to the end. 
So stocking stitches, knit a row, purl a row. Okay. You just continue like this, you get to the end, you turn, you do a purl row. And we continue for 16 rows. Okay, that's the, the knit row complete. So we turn, and now we'll use the new the new needles. Many times you, you continue with the old needles by accident, but you must remember to use the new ones. So we just purl. Well, this long rib below is is the turn back, and this that we're doing now, the stocking stitch, is the main body of the hat. So. Like I said, continue the 16 rows. This is the second row. So you see, just about see your stocking stitches is coming through there. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, 16 rows of stocking stitch. And uh, now we're gonna go on to the decrease row. And um, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> so we're working on the right side. I'm going to knit seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. knit three together. Pull it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you knit three together. Okay. It a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then knit three together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and knit three together. That leaves you with one, and you just knit that last one. So there we go. So that's your first decrease row. So it's knit seven, knit three together four times, and then knit one on the last stitch. Okay. And you turn and we purl back on this row. Okay. So that's the purl row. So we turn. And now it's another decrease row on your knit side. So now we're going to purl, sorry, we're going to knit five and then knit three together. So one, two, three. Four, five, and then knit three together like before. Okay. And then again, so it's four times again. So fat knit five, knit three together, then knit five. So one, two, three, four, five, and knit three together. And again, one, two, three, four, five, and then knit three together. And again, one, 
two, three, four, five, and then knit three together. And then knit one on the last one. So let's get this off straight again. <laughs> so then it's purl back on this row. You don't do any any decreasing on the purl rows on this this part. So you just purl all the way back. Okay, so we've, we've purled back, now we turn again, and we're on another decrease. So you can see this is where the decrease is happening, there. Get a nice neat line. So we're going to knit three and knit three together. Again, four times, okay? One, two, three and then we knit three together. One, two, three, knit three together. So as you're going up, as you're decreasing, your uh, decreases will, will all be in line with each other. So that's three and three together. And another three. One, two, three, and three together. And knit one. Okay. Okay, so you can see the decrease lines here, and here, and here. You'll see them better when we sew up. So we turn. Now on this purl row, we're going to purl two together across the whole row. So purl two together. And the last one, we purl three together. There we are. So that leaves you, yep, eight stitches. So that's it. And now what we need to do is we're going to cut our yarn. And you need to leave enough to sew up with. So just leave a decent amount. <laughs> thread it onto a yarn needle. So I have a looped yarn needle. It's a Knit Pro looped yarn needle. They're very handy for big yarn like this. And then we just loop them off like this. And pull your wool through and you draw your, your um, stitches together. Okay, so that'll be the top of your hat. That's where your pom-pom's going to go. Okay, and next is sewing up. So we've knitted our hat and we're ready to sew up. So we use mattress stitch to sew up. Um, and I generally use the, the wool that we have tied off to, to sew my hat up. So we've uh, put the thread through the stitches and drawn it up so you pull it tight. I usually put the, the, the needle through again just to give it a nice 
so it's nice and tight at the top. Just put my needle through there, so you're pretty much knotting it together. So you've got a nice firm start. Okay. Now in mattress stitch we go from one side to another on the outside. So if you want to look at the basic mattress stitch video, that shows you how to do it. Just on a basic, um, on a sample piece, it's a bit easier to see. So here we, that's these are the stitches, the last stitches. You don't want to go in there. Starting a little bit further down, and we follow. I'm going to follow the the decrease stitches here. And probably there. That's now there because that line follows down. So you go in the middle of a line of stitches, whichever one you feel is the most stable and the, the, the neatest really. So we're on this side, so we'll go to this side. So you pick up two, two bars like that. So you've gone in between these stitches there, like that. Okay. You don't need to pull tight just at the moment. So if you remember this side, we, we've fallen this decrease line. So, there. Feels like it's such a long way away, but it won't be once you sew it up. Once you pull it tight. So you don't have to pull it up tight just yet, just um, a little way. So you go back in where you came out of that side. Like that. Two bars and pull it through. So you're back in the other side where you came out of. Pick up two bars. Now on this side we've run out of our line of stitching, so we move in now. That's where we're sewing up. That one kind of ends there, so we're going to the next one here. So it would have been there. I know we would have gone back in there, so we're going to that one, like that. And sometimes it is guesswork. And if you're not 100% happy, you can go back and do it again. It's really easy to take back his mattress stitch. So go back in where you came out of. Pick up one. Pick up two bars. That one's kind of hidden. So I'll go a bit further in. You see, you can't quite get to that bar because it must be a decrease. You just make, make a guess, a good guess at where it will sit nicely. Okay. I'll just do one more on the other side and then we'll pull. So we go back in where we came out of. Go in there. Pick up two. It's a bit easier now because we're on the straight edge. So we'll give it a, we'll pull it up. This is our sewing here. Let's give it a pull. It all comes together quite nicely. Okay, so I go back to the other. So on that side, I go back to this side. I go in. Two bars. It's a bit messy there, but it won't be once you get onto the straight piece. It will still pull together nicely. Side, you go back in where you came out of two bars. You can always do one bar if you want to, but generally you do two. Sometimes you do one if you using if you've got stripes to sew up, it, it makes it a bit more even. Okay, we'll 
purple again. So don't leave it too long before you pull it up, otherwise it's, it's a bit uneven. Okay. So make sure there's still a little bit of stretch there. Check that we're still, still even. Let's have a look over there. So I think that side I'm pulling up a little bit quicker than this side. So when we go back to this side, just pick up one bar on that one and two on this one. So that one should even them out a little bit, so we'll get to the rib at the same time. So we'll just pull it up and see. Okay. See the rib ends there. That begins there. Sorry. That begins there. So we're not too bad. Where we came out of. So two bars. On this side. Now we've reached on this side we've reached the rib. So we'll just do one this side because that's the first one of the rib. And this side. A little bit to go, so we'll take two bars there, and that brings us in line. So we'll pull. Okay, so we're even there. Now we're going on to the rib section here, so you've got to decide what you, what row you're going to use. So I'm going to go down here, which is the where you've purled. So that's the knit stitch. That's the purl stitch. So really, that's the line I should be following on the on the, this side. And on here, I'm going down the knit row, the knit stitch there in the middle. So I'll continue with that. You want your knit to meet your purl. So we go back in where we came out of there. So we're going under these little bars on this purl side. You see that. Picking these up, so that's where I, I was. I went under there before, so we'll go to the next one. I'm just going to pick up one, so that we we'll make sure that we're nice and even on on the on the rib. So once I've done this, I'll go back to two bars on both sides. So on this, I'll pull the two bars between. That's it. So. Now it's two bars, so one, two. And on this side, go back in where you came out of, two bars. So on this one, you don't go back in that one. You, you, you are going back to the same space. You're picking up the next two bars on the, on the purl stitch, on the knit stitch. there on this side these now we don't sew up the whole side the whole of the rib because we want to do it on the other side we want to turn back so we sew up this seam to about halfway, so just pull. That's so it's still got a little bit of give. So here we don't want to go any more than halfway 
you want this turn back we need to sew this up the other way so I think maybe one more there just a double there I think that's about it okay so you pull that make sure it's got enough give so then what I do is I turn my hat inside out and then I'll sew this up in mattress stitch again but the other way so what I need to do is I'll just show you that's where you are now to so go back into the hole into the space where you last came across but go right through so now that you're working on what looks like the wrong side so you need to follow you need to pick it not pick a new line you need to follow the line you were following before but on the other side so this is the this is what was the purl stitch on the other side it's a knit on this side so it'll be easier to follow so where you are now across to there and you pick up two two bars on that side should be a pearl yeah I think we'll do that because it should be a pearl this side so I've gone in that's the knit row the knit stitch the pearl is kind of tucked away I'm going to go in there because it really is where it should be there okay so two again that side two that side side you've got to just kind of dig for them <laughs> you know when they're right because you bring your needle up and they look right they look correct and there really isn't any other bits to pick up if you dig in there you go one two And again, this side. That's it. Give it a pull, because we're getting a bit further down. You see, you swapped from wrong side to right side. See, that looks a little bit uneven, so I think this side will just take one bar. Let's see. Just open that up a little bit. That's the stitch there. Right, so there it is. Come out of there. That's the next stitch there. I'll just take one that side. And we'll do two this side. Oops. Lost you. There we are. <laughs> and. Oh, there we are. Just do one each side now for this last little bit because you want it to end up nice and evenly. That's it, and on this last one, you go in oops, and you go all the way through on that side. So, I'm going to pull this now. Oops, I should not pull in the tail. Uh, pull it so it's pulled together. Okay, and then we need to just finish this off. So I just tie it off with the the other tail, or that you cast on, you cast on um, thread, yarn, whichever, <laughs> and then. What I do is I check if that end is even, if I'm happy with this. Because while you're weaving this in, you can always neaten this up a little bit. So yeah, I do want to neaten that up a little bit, so I'll go back through there. 
and then back through that one just to pull it in I'm a bit happy with that I'll tie it off again <laughs> it's, it's, it's all you're looking at how you what you want your finished gown to look like are you happy with what you've done it's a little bit better isn't it there we are and then we need to weave this back through so if you turn your hat the right way and you weave these threads through with mattress stitch you can just weave it across this seam inside I've lost my needle <laughs> weave it in and out. I usually weave quite a little a bit in because if it ever come undone, which you hope it won't, you have enough to fix your hat or your blanket or your garment. And you go back the other way a little bit. What's that one? And then the other I mean, it looks it does look bulky this seam but I can assure you it doesn't feel it once you've got your hat on especially if you're doing a double knit hat or an Aaron it's a lot less bulky because your yarn's a lot less bulky that's it so this is your finished hat and if you would like to make a pom-pom you'll need a pom-pom maker so this is what you'll get I have a YouTube tutorial for the pom-pom um, you can use cardboard if you wish. But this is a really big one. I like the bigger ones. I do need a little bit of trimming sometimes. I'll just do that one. So that's your pom pom. Now to fix your pom pom on, I usually have a crochet hook. I'll find one. So if we turn it the right way, the inside out, sorry. It's going to go across here. So I just put my hook through. Get one thread. You're basically just passing your threads through the center, that center ring. So either side of that center ring, you've got two. You should have two strands on your pom pom. So you got them both in there. I mean, you can just use your yarn needle if you wish. I tend to use a crochet hook. So that was the centre bit. Both sides, they're both in there, either side. You tie them off. Nice and tight. And find the yarn needle that you lost. And you're sewing your ends. I'm terrible for losing things. <laughs> right, so make them even. And a garment you wouldn't normally tie them in together, but this is a hat you're not going to feel it. So just tie in the pom pom ends just at the top. Just weave them in a little bit. You don't need to do much, do it far. So just weave them in there. There we are. You don't have to put a pom-pom if you don't want to. So there you go. Super chunky pom-pom hat. I hope you liked the tutorial um, and don't forget to like and subscribe.